Run it up, then run it back. Run it up, then run it back. Run it up. Good morning. It's our special time this week. This week only. We're coming at you an hour later. It's post All Star weekend. Uh, we have lots to say about that. The festivities. <clears throat> and of course, Shab Sharania joining us. Already made it back to Chicago. He was in Indianapolis for the entire weekend. The show that was, we're going to get to all that, Shams. You look well rested. Did you go to parties? Did you do the whole schmooze thing? I, I, I did everything, but you know, it's running back week, so we're ready. Let's get it. <laughs> he did you it. Do all. Like, usually after a, a, a week in festivities, I don't look to rest in Shams. We, no. We, 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 we do things differently, clearly. Yeah, cle I'm clearly. Still, you can still hear me? This is still from Vegas. This Post is Vegas, still nasal drip. what I got going on. <laughs> this is it's still happening. Um, all right, we we're going to get to the all-star stuff for a second. But we do have breaking news, a little scoops action happening. Uh, nothing like a firing on a Monday morning, Shams. What's going on? Jock Vaughn, fired by the Brooklyn Nets. He just signed a multi-year contract extension last February, but he is now fired. They lost by 50 points right before the All-Star break to the Celtics. We know this team has, has been pretty dreadful ever since really the new year. They just have not been able to win games on a consistent level. And yes, I think the, the play right before the All-Star break contributed, but multiple players, including Spencer Dinwiddie, who is now departed, Mikhail Bridges, already there, they were pretty vocal behind the scenes for months now about how the offense was running. They felt like a lot of what, what Jack Vaughn was running was being run improperly. Uh, without structure, Jock Vaughn came into, this, into the year and said, we're going to run a free-for-all offense. And the team, from what I gather, has been pretty bonded on the fact that, you know, developing a hierarchy was important. And when they went into the, uh, the, the training camp, a lot of their offense was built around Ben Simmons and Oops. him playing <coughs> oh. at the one and him playing uh, at, at a high level for them. But throughout the season, he has been unavailable um, and so this is now the third coach Sean, under Sean Marks uh, since 2016. Kenny Atkinson, Steve Nash, Jock Vaughn. You had a Jock Vaughn interim uh, appearance multiple times during that stint as well. And so the Nets have a lot of questions. Who's going to be the interim? Who's going to be the long-term head coach? They have Mikhail Bridges there. You clearly build around Mikhail Bridges. But out of Cam Thomas, Cam Johnson, Ben Simmons, who are you building around on this roster I think Jock Vaughn's firing is just the tip of the iceberg for all the questions the Nets have. Um, Shams, <laughs> the unprofessionalism was just. <laughs> because when you said Ben Simmons, that got a reaction here. Well, hold uh, on, Shams. Hold up. What? Hold on. That's been a real thing that they were going to build this offense in Brooklyn around Ben Simmons. This after... offense, the, the offense in Brooklyn going into training camp was, was clearly built around the availability of Ben Simmons. I mean, you just, when you watch the games, the ball was in his hands. He was tasked to make wow. the plays. Surprised he made it out of training camp. <laughs> Chalk I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that was a great plan, especially with him just being unhealthy. You right? don't know if it was a great plan? Yeah, I, think you know. I mean, <clears throat> this doesn't, this is the first time I'm hearing of this. That's why I think we reacted yeah, that like threw, this. The that guy threw me hasn't been the last year, he hasn't played. He's had the issues yeah. with the back, the other, you know, his mental health. So this, this was confusing to me, especially the guy, Mikhail Bridges, who's clearly their guy going forward. For sure. Obviously, they have some pieces that they, you know, they should be competing more. What are they? They're, uh, they're 20, 21 and 33, and, and the East is kind of wide open. So this, this could have been a team that could have made some noise. I think they almost rewarded Jock Vaughn last year for just kind of getting through the whole debacle with the Kyrie sure. and Katie thing. And and now I think this is going to go a different route. Hire a Mark Dagnall type. Hire, a, you know, someone like that where it's young, uh, not a lot of pressure to win right away to develop these guys. But it's a tough city to develop. Brooklyn and New York, it's, it's a city you want to win now. You can get free agents. It's a great market. So... Right? Uh, it's, it's tough, but the idea of building the offense around Ben Simmons, I, I, yeah, I can me. do that. A 50-point loss, too, probably didn't help. Is the timing weird? Like, why why now? Is it because of the 50-point loss? Why not before the weekend? Like, what? how's that work? I think the 50-point loss plays a part. I think just how the Nets have looked uh, ever since, really, January 1. This team just has not been able to win consistently. Uh, and, and this has been brewing in a lot of ways behind the scenes. The Nets just... They just didn't act until now, after the All-Star break, after trade deadline. But like Chandler said, I think we should give Jock Vaughn credit. When they had Kevin Durant last year, Kyrie Irving, this team was competing for the top seed in the East. Uh, from everything I'm told, I think Kevin Durant Kyrie Irving both enjoyed playing for Jock Vaughn 
and thought he, 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 did, he did do a good job last year. He did earn what he got, which is the full-time job. He got an extension out of it. Uh, but this year with this group, just was not able to have the same level of success. So he success. saw this coming. It's not like he's just in Turks right now, All Star Weekend, just got shit canned. Like, like, <laughs> he, he knew this was kind of coming. There was conversations, I'm assuming, right? This isn't just I mean, out of the blue. I'm 21 and 30. Anytime you're on a multi year deal, though, it's, it's tough to yes. get fired like this. And, and this is half a year after you, know, you just get your extension. I mean, and that's my tough point time. is, too, like when, a, when an organization hires someone like this and you have that team, like what are your realistic like, like expectations? Like what do you, like what do you think is going to happen when you have this Ben Simmons situation glooming over your head? When your best player is Mikael Bridges and you have some p- pieces around that, you can't, really, you can't really expect. That's not fair to I expect. Thought, I, I, to, they to, probably thought they had enough. I mean, Mikael Bridges is, a, is, is one I mean, of those guys. Six you bring year. in Spencer Dinwiddie uh, last year who had a uh, hell of a season down in Dallas. You thought maybe you were going to get that version of him. And so, and you got Cam Thomas. You, you know, you got the other Cam, uh, Cam Johnson. Nick Claxton is playing really well, protecting the rim for them. They had, they had some pieces. They probably felt like that was enough to, to, to be competitive in the East, and it just didn't get done. All right, so if they're 11th right now, they're two and a half games back of being in a play-in. Is there a shot? I mean, there's a shot just because who are the teams above them? Atlanta, Chicago, Toronto's kind of right there in the mix. Nah, yeah, I could. I mean, Atlanta gets in. Chicago I mean, gets in. I think there's a shot, though. I think they have enough talent here to win games. That's the problem. They're kind of in that gray area where they're not really tanking and well, rebuilding. Well, now right. you, just, you, just re- you just reset the, the, the table. Yeah, right? now you get, it's rid of your, s- you get rid of your coach, so now your players are unsure what the direction of the organization is going to be at this point. And you create some confusion. So I, I think this this puts them in a tailspin. Yeah, who do they bring in? Do they just keep someone that's on the staff now? Do they hire someone immediately? Do It's a tough situation. Yeah, what's the again, long play there? What is the long play? You don't know. Do you just try and shut down like your guys for the rest of the season, the, rest of the next 30 games, and kind of try and get the highest possible draft pick? Who knows? But it's a sticky situation. And Jacques Vaughn, again, at least he's getting his money. I was going to say, I'm always happy when yeah. someone gets paid not to work. American dream. I love that so much. Uh, Shams, all right, we're going to talk a little all-star right now. To recap the weekend, at least the game anyways, uh, 39 points for Mr. Damian Lillard, 11 to 23 from three-point range, and we'll get to that, by the way. Uh, he got MVP honors, led the East over the West. This is the first time a team scored over 200 points in an All-Star game. Jalen Brown had 36, Tyrese Halliburton 32. On the West side, Carl Anthony Towns had 50. You know, very serious. Um, okay, we're going to get to what it looked like on TV because we were watching. But Shams, you were in the arena. What did it feel like? How did it look to you? I mean, all the players said it after the game. Something needs to change. Something needs to be done. They just didn't bring that level of defensive intensity, competitiveness. Just was not there. I didn't say it. All the players said it after the game. I, just watching, I think there needs to be some level of incentive on, yeah. on the game. And I don't know if you go what, what the baseball model is. You know, East versus West, do you give whichever side wins home court advantage? I, I think guys would play hard for home court advantage in the NBA Finals, especially guys that have a chance to compete, which every year there seems to be more parity, right? You look at this playoff run that we're going to have here. There's probably eight teams, nine teams that think they have a chance to win a championship, right? Like some realistic, some not, but they feel like they can do it. So those players at least would play hard. Uh, and it would make this salvageable. Uh, but on the other end, Damian Lillard, I will say, <laughs> despite the lack of defense, his, his shooting, his dominance, I don't think it was predicated off the lack of defense. He was just shooting absolute heaves from, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, from Chicago. Like, his, his shots were from half court. Uh, you know, all kudos to him for making those shots. And I know for him, he's hopeful that this sets him up for the second half of the season. Uh, there's a lot that him and Giannis still need to work through. But I think him... Having that performance sets them up nicely for the second half. By the way, there were 169 threes <laughs> taken in this game. 169 threes. That should tell you everything you need to know ab- about the game. So I think the incentive should be all of the young kids that are coming to All-Star Weekend, and that's possibly their first time seeing their superheroes up close in person. You try to put on the best show you can, as competitive as you can. Being formal players, we understand All-Star Weekend is a time for you to have fun. Also a time for you to rest your body. You know, the, the, the right. rigors of the schedule, 50-plus games in and all of that. But for two and a half hours, we should get some, some sort of competitiveness out of this. 168 three-pointers is, in, is, is insane. A 200-point game, we've, 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 always, we've longed to have a 200-point game, but in the right way. 
and they we just we're just missing the mark with this all-star game and, and like the player said something needs to change I think it's mentality I think it starts with them but how yeah. I mean even if the somebody young guys are like somebody got to walk in the locker room and, and light the fire it's and, tough and say, because we, we even the the home court advantage in the playoffs it's like a lot of those guys this year it is kind of balanced where a lot of teams think they can some win some of them but don't care about it. most of them don't care because they're not going to be there it's like are they really going to play hard in a game in February when it's supposed to be your vacation when it's supposed to matter than in June when there's a right. good chance you're not even there you Usually there's only, let's be honest, two to four teams that can actually win a championship. This year it's a little more spaced out, but it's tough. Like, I love offense, I love dunks, I love three-pointers, but 211 to 186, that's... We didn't even need dunks, really. We got 168 at the end, we points. got Carl Anthony Towns doing some fun little reverse dunks, but, like, it, yeah. it's pretty dreadful, man. It's, it's, it's pretty dreadful, it and bad. it's not even fun to watch. The crowd, it can't be fun to, to be there. Thank you, FanDuel, for not making us have to go. Wow! <laughs> but uh, that, it sucks, man. It's not fun at all to watch, and it's it's... Because those are the best players in the world, but they're not playing against the best like players in the world. They're just playing good. They're in the gym by themselves. They're just shooting heaves like and cardio. Dunk. There's no, it, but you also don't want to be the guy to get someone hurt by trying to meet them at the rim. So it's like with all the load management and all the different rules now and implications of, of guys playing and not playing and resting a game right in the middle of the season to expect high competitiveness is kind of crazy. I think. I think one of the Do it after, like, the Pro Bowl and yeah. football, maybe. I think one of the positives we can take away is we've, we've reached a breaking point. We've always heard that the game needs to be more competitive. The fans are complaining. Now we've reached a place where it's like, okay, something needs to happen. And now that that conversation is getting louder and louder, I'm hoping that we get a different product. What if they did it after, like the Pro Bowl? After the season? Yeah, like or like, like right before, before the, the finals. finals. So like, okay. Because everyone's gone Jaylen by Brown then, right? Jalen Brown and Tatum can't play if no, they're in, and, and Jokic is That's even there. worse, because everyone's like, I'm on worse. vacation yeah. now. Yeah, Jalen, they're really not going to care. I mean, look, Larry Bird, earlier in that day, like he said before the game that he would like to see the best players actually compete. That's, that's what he was asking for. You have the best players, so that's half the equation. It's the competition part, which clearly is not happening. I used to think, oh, I wanted to spend hours trying to figure out how to fix the All-Star yeah. game in the weekend. But now I'm getting to that really negative point where I'm just like, is this just it? It's, I mean, is there a fix? It's never going to be like the full game is going to be competitive. Remember last year when Jalen Brown and Tatum, they kind of had some that possessions going yep. at it. If, if there was more of that, if there were more some like rivalries, but now with West and East, it's like the, the, the Anthony Edwards, SGA, like they can't even really go at it. Like, you know, teammates, True. they can't even go at it. So like Luca and Devin Booker, that's the big rivalry right there on the same team. So like there, there was nothing, there was no matchup that I was looking forward to watch because number one, no one plays defense and yeah. they don't care, so well, it's, it's I, tough. I would just like to see somebody say, I'm the best player in the world and set themselves apart, and tonight I'm going to prove it. And I think once you have somebody say that, our competitive nature's kick in, and somebody's going to take that personal, and I think you get, a, you get a more competitive game. I think that's what we've seen in the old times, in the, in the, in the 90s, early 2000s, where you had Kobe trying to... Uh, Kobe Bryant was one of the best players in the world. LeBron James coming into the league trying to establish himself as one of the best players in the world. Um, Michael Jordan's last All-Star game in 2003, Kobe wanted those moments. Those are, those are moments. So I think some of these young guys and, and getting the fresh blood in there, they're only following the example of some of the veterans, but once they become the guys that are in position to be in control, you know, the SGAs, the Ant-Mans, and all of these young guys, the Halliburtons, I think they have an opportunity to make this competitive again. I don't know because, there, you know, a lot of those guys talked after the game and there was, one, you know, I think SGA was like money talks and Anthony Edwards was like, oh, this is all-star, it's just supposed to be fun. Like there wasn't, no one had the attitude of, yeah, this sucked and I really wish it was more competitive. So now I'm wondering, I don't know if the young guys are going to be the ones. The, the problem is, but when I left the NBA, it used to be such a, a, an honor, a prestigious thing to right. get selected to the All-Star team and to go and play. Now it's like you almost just want to get picked, but do like the Joel Embiid, do the Julius Randle thing and not even have to go. It's almost just a drag to, <laughs> it's a drag to go. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I've, I've been a finalist twice to be an All-Star. Yeah. And I had made up my mind I was going to play hard as hell if, you got if in I had got in. Yeah. yeah. And see, but guys that are 8, 9, 10, 20-time All-Star LeBron James, they're not going to give it to us. They know that they are judged off their play in the regular season, and especially the postseason and the finals and so forth. No one's going to put their resume, oh, you know what, SGA busted Anthony Edwards. He gave him 40 in the All-Star game. It doesn't matter. There's no weight to it. So the, definitely the kids until, aren't going to care. Until they make it have some weight. Until, it, they make, until they put it in a position for it to hold weight. And I think, again, you know how competitive we are. If one guy comes out and says, I am the best player in the world, 
Sunday, I'm going to prove it. I'm busting somebody's ass. So you need a heel. You, you need a, but you know, also the problem you, is, you need the, best, of the, the best player in the world is, is Jokic, right? We can all agree on that. And yeah. he's not going to look good in this type of game. So does it really you show? You did have that sweet that's sort a, of dunk at the end. But you know what I mean? Does it really show who's the best player of the game in the All-Star game? Because Jokic is the best player in the world. What if the league is in? But he's but never going to look like the best should. player in the All-Star game. Why, why not? That's just not his thing. He's not going to shoot. He can have 20 assists. Yes. Like, what if the I'm league serious. said, and I know this is extreme and it won't happen because of the money and everything, but what if the league was like, you know what, you guys don't care, clearly, we're just shutting it down. No All-Star game for the next three years. I don't think anybody that would kills care. kills the NBA. As so long, no as, long as you get the vote and you get to put that on the resume and the whole No, thing, we're not doing anything. That, no, that will never you can't do that. I can see them being like, all right, hey, listen, you get voted in, you could do it, whatever, but there's no game <laughs> or no actual festivities. That would make sense to still have like the honor of being an all-star. But yeah, but then you get then you're getting exactly what you're saying. It's basically want. then you're just all NBA. It's the same thing. You're yeah. just getting an award and not doing it. What about it. your sponsors? It's more for the fans. Yeah. It's more yeah. for the fans, it's more for the sponsors, but now I think the fans are even getting over it. Yeah, I mean it was look, to watch on TV it was not enjoyable. Let's make the all star game things. great again. And let's put it in, in in markets that are nice. Here we San go. San Francisco next year. That's a start. We got warm, wet, warm weather, I think, was the, oh, was warm the start. Because it was 17, I believe, on It was freezing right? in Indianapolis. <laughs> Indianapolis. No offense. Um, there was a moment, though. Trey Young did have a really good little highlight moment in the middle of this one on KD. Meowza. Yeah, That's I like fun. That. More of that. I like that. And this is, this is what I want to see more of. I'd like to actually see Kevin Durant. Well, he looks like he's actually trying to defend him, too. He's sitting down a little bit, and then he kind of gave up there, obviously, after the... <laughs> The nutmeg, but this is what it's all about. Trey Young's a young guy. He's got pictures of KD when he was a kid going to games in Oklahoma, and now he's got a chance to play against his his hero growing up. Like this, there, there should be more intense battles of one on one like this. But yeah, I really that's don't a, know. That's a, that's a start. I, I thought it was competitive with the Elam Indy. We got we got some yeah. good, we got some yeah. good basketball out of that. I understand it's not an NBA thing. It came from the TBT, um, and they adopted it. But I I think they could they could implement that. Well, we're done crapping on the game. Now we're going to crap on the slam dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Um, Mac McClung, fifth player in history wow. to win back to back. This was Whee! dope. This was real. I wish you made it the first time, but this. That's all right. They That's were all insane. It shouldn't count against them, which I think the judges were not told um, about, by the way. Uh, the only 50 point dunk of the night, he beats Jalen Brown in the final. Yep, that is Shaq. Boom. Don't push off no nothing. Look, the text thread, Twitter, everything, everyone was very active on this. We'll just start with what did you think? What did he say? I'm a professional hitter. <laughs> well, I hate when I say I can win the duck. Uh, it's yeah, bad. Joel and B was it's, watching. it's really <laughs> bad. And I watched and I was actually stoked because I actually wanted to see what Jalen Brown was going to do. For right? sure. I thought maybe he had some tricks. I, I, I can do two of the dunks he did right now. <laughs> And that's not a joke. That's not. I believe you. It's 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 crazy that he he did the dunk contest with that as his plan. You know what I mean? And bravo, kudos to going there. Hopefully this kind of kickstarts other all stars now to be like, oh man, I can definitely do better than Jalen. Hopefully that's like the effect. Wow. But hopefully it doesn't okay. go the other way. I don't know if that's what he wants, but yeah. But but man, this is this is lackluster. The the, the judges were awful. The, they were way off with their score. I know. The the Mac McClung had some serious dunks. Again, he missed the first one, but that one where he bobbled it and dropped it and did that's insane. I don't know that the judges even saw that from uh, their the angle. fourth guy, what's his name? Darnell Hillman. Darnell, Darnell <laughs> Hillman gave I made Hawk as a higher score on his dunk where he pushed off. Shaq, mm -hmm. then Mac McClung, where he literally bobbled a ball on purpose and did it Which without I don't even think touching a human being. That's right. it's, it was a joke. It was it was silly. Uh, Jalen Brown, no, again, no offense. He shouldn't have been in the finals. It should it should have been, should have should been have someone been, else against Mac McClung. It should have been the other Jacob G League Toppin. kid. Yeah, it should have been Jacob Toppin yeah. in the, in the final. He was give him give him credit. He was uh, doing some incredible dunks, and and we saw we saw your star power go to work for Jalen Brown. Fair. He was in the he was in the final. I don't I don't think he should have been there. I'm I'm sure Jalen, you know, he's a very realistic person. I don't think he knew that he should have been there. I respected the fact um, that he that he paid homage to his little brother. Yeah. I respect the fact that he paid homage to Michael Jackson. The dunks. Were, what about D? I mean, is that what, <laughs> what about D Brown? What about D Brown when he was on D. the ground? Just, <laughs> yeah, he dabbed after. Like <laughs> he dabbed. He, he dabbed literally after. dabbed after. But he did not D Brown. I'm a, I'm a, listen, I'm gonna go a different direction. We have to give Matt McClung all of his credit. Yeah. 
we complain about we've seen every single dunk? No, we have not. He was True. creating things off the fly. He jumped over a seven-foot Shaquille O'Neal with yeah. no help, no push-off, no nothing, threw the ball in the air. These are things that I've never seen before. He had his friend on his other friend's shoulders. These are innovative things. But because it's Matt McClung, instead of a Jalen Brown or a household name, we're kind of putting a cut on it and saying, ah, it could be better. I thought this was extremely, extremely um, entertaining coming from Matt McClung. So give him credit and give J Jacob Toppin yeah. credit as well. And you know what? Maybe a good thing that came out of this is Matt McClung now, he's known as the guy, right? He really is. Hopefully he does it again. And. And Although, did you notice when they asked him afterwards, he was yeah. like, oh, I gotta think well, about it. Well, it depends. What if he's in Real Madrid next year? Are they gonna Fair. bring him over to play? Like, Stop, like man. No, I'm you just saying, to. like, seriously, what, what do they do? If, he's not, if he doesn't get promoted up to the NBA, do they, do they, do they let him come back to, to 3 P? But my point is, maybe now Zion, you know, John Morant, they're watching, and, and maybe they want to be the guy to, like, take him down, because it's such a thing. So, like, maybe that helps, but, like, besides that, it's... It's tough. Mac, it was tough. Mac did great. Toppin should have been in the finals. I mean, Hawkins was even solid, even though he it was whatever. It was it was pretty lackluster. It was pretty lackluster, and that was the TV version, Shams, because you you were I don't know probably saved from hearing the TV version like we had to do. But um, what was your takeaway from not just Max dunks, but just the overall contest in the building? Well, like 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 Chandler said, I want to see who's going to come out and say, I want to take Mac McClung down next year. I mean, we'll see where Mac will be playing. We'll be in the NBA. We'll be in the G League. He's turned down so many overseas offers, like m worth millions of dollars. I mean, we're, we're going to hopefully get to ask him at some point this week about what he views his future and things like that. But if he's going to be here and he's going to be able to be in the dunk contest, like – Who's going to take him down? We've seen for the second straight year, he's come up with dunks that no one's done. This year, he actually did miss his first dunk or two, but still, he, he, he finished them. And that first dunk he had where he threw the ball in the air to yeah. himself twice, uh, the, 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 you know, the windmill reverse, that dunk we've never seen before, he, he's invented it. I, you know, he's claimed to invent it. And uh, he, he calls it the whoop whoop. Hopefully, we'll, we'll get to ask him about it this week. The whoop. Um, but this whoop is whoop. something Mac McClung obviously whoop. puts a lot of effort in. And um, he also plays in the G League, one of the best players in the G League. But who's going to come, and, and if he's going to do it again, who's going to come and challenge him? And who's going to come and try to dethrone him? Uh, you know, you would hope that it could be a big name. I think that's what the NBA would want, but who could that guy be? I will say, watching the Rising Stars game, too, he's got game, too. So hopefully by the time next year comes around, he's actually on an NBA roster. Right. Why can't we get him on a roster? It would be nice. I'm writing this down. I'm, I'm going to manifest this. I want to see a healthy Zach Levine back in it. Okay. I would like to see Aaron Gordon come back. Gotcha. <laughs> John ja Morant. Love that. Zion Williamson. Yes. And Matt McClung, those should be the five guys yeah. to do the... Do not hate it. What are you drinking? What, what, <laughs> What's the problem? What, who, What's who wrong with that? It's, it's a realistic no, list. It's, none of that will ever happen. Why? Which because part? Because you see this, I think there's a better off chance that they cancel Dunk Contest overall. It was, it was, it was pretty bad, man. Well, we should just get Jalen Brown to come back. Why? I thought it was entertaining. <laughs> It was the most person. I mean, look, Jalen Brown's not take. known for showing a lot of personality. I'd rather Mac just do eight dunks and have anyone do the shit I saw this weekend. It was, See, it was, now this is what I'm worried about. You, this <laughs> laughing that you're doing to Jalen Brown. All we want are for stars to come forward. And now if we just Which, by laugh the way, at I him. Think it was I think it was bad enough to where other guys will want to do it because they know they can do better than, than this. The, the guy, he took a 5'3 YouTuber and sat Steve him Brown. down after a dude jumped over Shaq. Think about it. Someone jumped <laughs> over Shaq and they took a 5'3 YouTuber and put him in a chair. But did you see Jason Tatum's coat? Was really sure, nice. but like <laughs> you can't tough. jump over Shaq and then jump over YouTube. But, si but, uh, YouTuber but sitting. But here's the thing: the if thing. you have if you have three to four other all stars oh. out there, why are you showing this? <laughs> what we doing? Who's this? Like, what we doing? <laughs> now you guys are trying to click. <laughs> what we doing? This That's is not Conrad. Right. Listen, if you, if you have three or four all stars, this is, all this star is not okay. <laughs> I'm trying to. I, <laughs> not right. If you have three to four other guys of yeah. this caliber in a dunk contest, I think the fans you. You, uh, I can't. <laughs> the camera guys are laughing. For what? God's sakes. <laughs> I will say this: it was a it was a great move for him to do it and to put himself in the situation. Yeah. Did it pan out? 
that he, I think how he thought it would. Maybe, because if that's what he rehearsed in practice, there's no way he thought he was going to go win this. Like, was he doing interviews before this? Saying, like, I got he was doing this? a lot of interviews. Like, was he saying, like, this is, I'm winning this? No, like, he actually was, I, I will say this. Every interview I saw him do, he was very much like, I want to come out here and have fun. And, like, I thought it was important that a, a, one of us comes out and does this. I just think guys are so At least he did it. Exactly, yeah, That's the point. Like, at he, least he did it. He did it. He did it, for no, sure. And I think that's the kick. Hopefully that kick starts. But these are, these are layup line dunks. These are layup line dunks. This is nothing. That's, this I mean, is nothing impressive. Better layup. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like. <laughs> but he did it. But he we, did we, it. We should, we should give Jalen Brown credit for doing it. All NBA, all star player. Like, first guy since 2017. No at least doubt. he did it. And, and hopefully and that kick starts other guys. He tried, he tried guys. to put forth an effort. Hopefully well, I'm canceling the entire weekend, so that's my whole fix. I, I'm done trying to fix it. You know what didn't need to be fixed, though? The Steph Sabrina three point con. For me, that was actually very compelling television. Mm -hmm. uh, I was on the edge of my seat. Too bad it was only like seven minutes long. But Steph did hit his final four shots, got 29 points, defeating Sabrina Ionescu by three. She hit her first seven, which is what made it just like must watch. Um, she also had 26 points, which PS tied the highest score by any NBA player in the actual three point shootout. Did you love it? Loved it. This yeah. is probably my favorite part of the entire weekend. And I think. When I was watching her the first rack, I was like, oh, oh man. no. This I sat hard. down and got yeah, real. He's going to no, lose. We, uh, we were, yeah. we were he's going to lose. I was like, serious. all right, he's in trouble. Yeah. And that was uh, that was about as best as it could go for Sabrina, honestly. She was lights out. She, she made 26 points, which is what won it for Dame Lillard. And Steph Curry, he proved why he's the greatest shooter to ever touch a basketball. So I think this was highly competitive. I think it was fun. I think it was great for the women's, uh, w, the WNBA. I love that she shot from the men's the men's line, but like, would yeah, it have been she, different if she shot from the women's line? Would she have made thirty I mean, plus? She did. I mean, she like, did well. With, who knows? With, with That's what I'm she saying. Shot. So like, but I, she I, couldn't do that. You you would have all the mouth breathers like, no. Nah, yeah, but you could also out. argue the other side. Like, oh, of course, she lost. She's shooting from where they. She doesn't usually shoot from there. It's like I'd almost rather her shoot from her line and no, beat him. No, that's just a, no. I love that she shot from from his line. Yeah, she, I, I think she that did. Was awesome. I think she did an incredible job. Forget the line, forget the ball, forget everything. She's one of the best shooters in the world. She showed it. Um, but I think the NBA has something to build on off of this. You got an opportunity to have Caitlin Clark in the WNBA Thank next 100%. year. Implement her, bring her in. Um, you bring Sabrina back, and you just allow some of the top women shooters to be part of the, the three-point contest with the best shooters on the men's side as well. Throw Brittany Griner in the dunk contest from what I saw. I, mean, <laughs> I, saw the I would watch that. I would totally watch that. Shams, do you, have you heard anything? Did they... Love how this particular contest went, and is there hope for more? I, I believe I believe they did. To me, being there, this event probably had the most excitement, the most buzz. Even afterward, talk, you know, being around fans, being in that arena, uh, you know, Saturday night, Sunday, that event had the most excitement to me. And I spoke to Steph Curry late uh, Saturday night, and and he he said when he saw Sabrina Ionescu shooting. Uh, obviously, she got the 26 points. That was like the lucky number of the night, even in the NBA three-point contest. Like 26 was the number to beat. She gets there, and Steph Curry told me with everyone, every one shot that she made, he was just like, I could just feel my confidence getting lower and lower. And then he gets goes out there, and like Chandler said, he's the best, greatest shooter of all time, and he does what he does best. Uh, I think he would want this contest to keep going, this event, this special event. I think Sabrina Ionesco would want it to keep going as well. And just hear me out on this. Next year, it's in the Bay. Steph Curry, star of the Bay. Sabrina Ionescu is from the Bay. You get Caitlin Clark in it. And if Clay Thompson, if he's with the Warriors or not, Dame maybe well. you get Clay Thompson in there. But mm -hmm. both guys, uh, you know, I think would, would, would be great competitors to Sabrina. If you, know, you told Sabrina me that Ionescu next Caitlin year, Clark. Caitlin and Sabrina were shooting against two Clay on two. and Steph, I would watch, I would watch, I'd be more excited for that than the game, than the skills challenge, than, the, than, than anything. So that would be, they should book that in advance right now. Just let the women come in and fix this Seriously. whole weekend. Don't worry about it, guys. We got you. I mean, it would be awesome. If, if, awesome. if Kaylin Clark comes out, because let's be honest, she's making more money in college. I mean, it's going to follow her, though. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's going to be good. Um, we did have a three-point contest as well. Did anyone have, who had Lillard winning? What? Uh, the guy that had every single pick uh, correct. Oh, my bad. So Chandler. Uh, he did win, second straight year. Score of 26, as we mentioned in the opening round. He had a tiebreaker before putting up an identical 26 points in the final round, beating Trey Young and Carl Anthony Towns. Uh, he was just, he's, it's almost like, hear me out. When Dame Lillard was named a starter in this all-star 
game. Everyone was like, ah, he's great, but he shouldn't be a starter this particular season. It's like he heard that and he mm. took the entire weekend seriously. I, yeah, I think this is great too. Just, I mean, obviously everyone knows how casual this weekend was and stuff, but this is great for his confidence moving forward for the season, for Doc Rivers, for Giannis, for the Bucks. Mm. I think this is a great weekend for Milwaukee. And again, I think it was not very competitive. I think it was, a you know, a, obviously an all-star weekend that's supposed to be fun and playful, but this is a big weekend for him. First ever start. Back to back. Now he's got a chance to go back to back to back in yep. the three-point contest. And I knew he was going to win this. It was, oh, that, God, settle down. it was that easy. He's the best shooter that was in it. I don't, I, why wasn't Steph in it? Just because if he would have lost to, like, Dame, then it would have kind of took away from him shooting against Sabrina or something? Or maybe just the sheer of the fact that it was right after. Well, I don't know. That's, I mean, not that he couldn't do it. Yeah, I was going to say. 23s? It probably would have taken a little shine. Like, if he would have lost, like, Malik Beasley and then had to go shoot against Sabrina, like, it would have been like, eh, why is he doing it? Like, yeah, what happened to Malik Beasley? That's who we had. <laughs> it didn't work out. It did not work out. It did not. Did anyone surprise you? Good, bad? Uh, I'll give Jalen Brown his credit. He played really well in the actual All-Star game. Really? Yeah, 36 off, 36 off the bench was efficient. Only missed eight shots. It is the All-Star game. Not a lot of defense being played. Oh, you're going but he made, But he made six three-pointers. And I'm a, you know, a six-man-of-the-year type of guy. I like bench players when they do their thing. So 36 off the bench. And the three-point contest, I like in twenty minutes. Like, I like Towns. Towns, he's got like the perfect little form. It's quick. It's like it's it's it's. You know, maybe he is the best big man he's, shooter of he's all a, time. He's a center, basically. Convincing you. I mean, outside of Dirk, he's got a real argument. Yeah. But I, yeah, I yeah. thought he was he was impressive. He was impressive in the three-point contest. He was impressive that last five minutes of the of the actual game where he at least was given some excitement, dunking, and getting to the rim. So, kudos to Cat too. Oh, we're doing that. Yeah. All right. Out of boy, Cat. I can get jiggy with that one. Yeah. Thank you. We're giving claps to everyone. Shams, we appreciate you. I hope you had a great weekend. Um, we will see you tomorrow. Thank you for all your hard work. And we'll take a quick break when we come back some more about everything, including All Star. Run, run it back, yeah. return. Run it all. Run it back. Yeah, yeah. Run it all. Run it back. Run it Train wreck today. Oh, man. This show is something else. Rising Stars game did happen. Uh, Benedict Matherin. Won the MVP honors in that one. He had 18 of his team's 40, including the game winner, winning uh, the first game for Team Jalen. Then they defeated the G-Leaguers in the championship game after they upset Wemby and Team Pow in the semifinal. That's a lot of words, guys. Uh, but he's, look, <laughs> Matherin's sophomore season has not been probably his favorite. So do you think something like this helps the confidence as we come back? No, but I think he's a good player, and I think... <laughs> all right, then. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't think he's going back to Indy. Well, I guess he's in Indy, but I don't think he's like, all right, I'm ready for the second half of the season. I think this kid's a hooper. I think he's got game. I think he's a huge piece of their team this year and obviously the future. Um, and I love the little rivalry with him and Jaden Ivey, and I love the chippiness yeah. and the shit talking. Like, that. that's... That's what it's fun. I want to see if my two favorite players go at it. I want to see them compete. And they, I saw it a little bit more in this game. Mm -hmm. Still not much because they were still not trying to hurt each other and they weren't playing very hard. But, yeah, I, I love Benedict Matherin. He's got game. He's, he's versatile. He scores in a, an array of ways. So I, think it's, I don't think it's given him any more confidence than he already has. He's a confident guy. He's a confident man. There was a moment where a little money was, well, he was trying anyways. He offered Paolo Bencaro a $25,000 bet. Uh, in real time to make two free throws. And then he missed both. Now, Bancaro did not take the bet. My question is, does this happen? Is this a real thing? Yeah, see, like, if he said bet, and he accepted it, like, he owes me 25 grand. If he, like, a thousand percent. Like, that's not, this isn't, like, yeah. a joke. Like, you're saying, if you say $25,000 bet, and I say, like, bet or confirmed, that's a bet. Does that happen, though? This like, happens. you guys make oh, yeah. bets like that oh, in real yeah. time? And you pay. And you pay. And you pay. And you pay. That's, pay. The, that's the number one thing. We call it no ass betting. No ass <laughs> yeah, betting? Don't bet out your ass. If you say don't it and I ass. say bet, <laughs> pay me my money. I will not do that then. Uh, Ferris. It's true. That's, that's a real thing. That's okay, a you're real saying thing. it, you're, you're standing on your biz. Yeah, you're standing feel, on business. I feel like this whole game is basically about Benedict Matherin. And by the way, we started by saying he did win the MVP, but he also missed two dunks on Friday oh, night. Airballed one, and both Tyree Halliburton and Obi Toppin are oh, just oh laughing God. at him. Wait, it looked like he made it. <laughs> it looked Which like he made worse? this. Where's no. Waldo? Wee! Oh, wow. It's, it's like actually he changed his mind at the last second or something. I've, so that's never, one. I've never seen that in my life. 
Oh, now we're just showing Miss Dunstan during the season? Yes, we are. That's what we're doing. Boy, rubbing his nose Yeah, in well, it? I mean, he got MVP, so now we can make fun. Uh, I know, we're trying to build Honestly, for Miss Dunks, they're both kind of cool Miss Dunks. Okay, it's, not like it's not like he got hung and like fell back and broke his he, collarbone. He literally airballed it yeah, up. He, yeah, but it looked like he made it. It looked pretty good. It looked like he made it? I thought he made, made it when it? I first saw the That's clip. That's not a That's thing. because probably... Still in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, are you okay? Um, I don't think these are. I don't think these are bad things. All right, let's talk about. There's a Walker Kessler moment. Oscar Shebway had a dunk on Mr. Kessler. Um, and by the way, I will say this: Walker Kessler is trying to play a little bit of defense. Yeah. See and see what happens when you try. Yeah. Well. Ay ay ay. Yeah, he is very tall. I will say I like this format. Too with the, little, the, the G breath. League yeah. guys playing the the Wimbies and like the yeah, Wimby, the, the Wimby's know. team. Yeah, that was the best team by far. That was probably the biggest shock of the week is that this squad here beat them. But again, it's like well, the I mean, East they're first. They're only going to 25. Well, oh, and it's like the East versus the West. When I saw the East versus the West, obviously that West team. When you saw the pictures before the game, that's one of the best. What, they're talking about nine, ten Hall of Famers on that team. Yeah. That, that's when I knew the East was going to win. They were going to play harder. They were going to care more. Like, that's when I knew right there. I was like, okay, this team is clearly better. So give me the other team because they're going to actually want it more. Wow, that's some good psychology that you put in place on that. And one. I also got that one right too. Yeah, I, got, I did get East. And I had Halliburton, and technically Halliburton should have well, been. Well, also, MVP. I took Giannis as the MVP, which never again, because you have to take someone that makes threes and shoots 25 threes exactly. to an MVP from here on out, because it's all it's going to be. It's going to be half court, 35 foot. It's going to be Trey Young's, the Steph Curry's. It's going to be Dame. It's gonna Halliburton. Be exactly. Thank you. I'm gonna... There was a celebrity game, believe it or not. Now, this I can honestly tell you I watched none of. Um, but I can tell you about it. This I know, was all. This, I know this. Michael this was Parsons. The, this is probably the best event of the weekend. And, what? And I, Shout out to our guy Puka. Did, you, did we see Puka dunk? Yeah, but did he have 37 points and 16 rebounds? Uh, like old. I mean, Michael that's what cowboy. That's what cowboys do. We, okay. we go get MVPs. And, and this is the only way a cowboy gets famous and in when? February. We'll take it. We'll really? Take You'll take this? It's a Absolutely. Cowboy you, gotta, won. you gotta start somewhere. The Cowboy finally yeah, won. You know what? Let's give it up for the Cowboys. You gotta start somewhere. They finally did something. I will say what this. Why are you clapping? <laughs> Michael Parsons, he was just the biggest, strongest guy He's beast. out there. Yeah, I don't, I don't... It's funny. Now, after our interviews during the Super Bowl, yes. bro, these guys saying they're gonna... Ah, I'll give you 15, 12. No, no chance in hell. Oh, okay. <laughs> even I even no Puka. Show. Like, Puka had some highlights, and he's a friend of the show. He's a friend of the show. I was excited for Puka when he dug. I was like, hey, the dunk I was him. nice. The dunk was nice, but like, my God, like this was nice. Look, let me see. That's fun. Hey. What are you talking about? But just the way they move and the yes. way they play, it just there's no way they would score anywhere close to 12 to see, 16. See, I think Puka looks NBA smooth game. though. I think his actually looks like yeah okay. against influencers. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah. It's. I, I think this is this is great for our whole argument in Vegas because there's no chance in hell that they would score that many points. And now it, they were so bad in this game. Now I don't think I can score a touchdown either. You know. That's, that's what, what happened. If that's what they look like in this, then I don't want to see what I would look like in that. So I I think we were both wrong. They can't score 15, and I don't think we can score. Even though I did moss Joe Hayden. I really. Yeah, I did see that actually. I really did think that would change him because I thought Puka Nakua looked pretty smooth out there. He had 16 points in yeah. the celebrity. <laughs> he said he's gonna have 16 game. in the NBA against like Kawhi Leonard. Okay, well he's let him have a chance. <laughs> there is no chance. <laughs> There's no. He scored 16 <laughs> against YouTubers, against TikTokers. TikTokers. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But that, I still thought it looked pretty good, at least from what I've seen. All right, we're taking a uh, a quick break right here. When we come back, Wemby says he wants to participate in the dunk contest. Please. Will he? We'll talk about it and run it back returns. Run it all, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it all, run it back, run it all, run it back. I took your boy out one night. <laughs> Here we go, you buying that. First up, you know it. Victor Wimben Yama says he wants to participate in the slam dunk contest and the three point contest at some point. Are you buying? I'm buying. Three point, sure, why not? I did, why not? He can shoot, He's, it's fun to see. Dunk contest, I'd be interested to see what he can do. He's so tall and right? so long. But again, after seeing this last weekend, what's he doing? After seeing this last weekend, I don't think he's buying it. Oh, Lou, Lou said, Lou's supposed to answer that one. Oh shit! Shit! <laughs> after seeing it this weekend, I only sit here for the whole commercial break. He was thinking research, about his whole. Just, just for us to open what? up. The Lou, Lou, Lou don't look at me. You're looking at you. Looked at me. Well, that's no, that's, that's cool. your fault. That's Lou, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. I'll take his question. Let's go. Um, okay, really? I would. I at, anybody, anybody, do it. We need big names. We need stars. He's gonna be the his face of the NBA. His dunks would be funny. It would be fun. And even if, again, 
I say this now, even if he's bad, like I still would want to see what he's got. You know what I mean? Same, same. same. What about um, you, Lou? What's your take on that? That's your question. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do the same? Okay, well, here you go. Lou, Chet Holmgren has an idea, and I like that he's thinking, trying to figure, fix things as well. The four highest verticals in the league should have to participate in the dunk contest. <laughs> Okay. No, I'm not buying it. What, what is this training camp, Chet? Oh, what is this? Fun. The NBA combine? combine? <laughs> He's trying to fix it. This is not it. He need new tools. Well, I mean, at this point, we're just throwing ideas out. By yeah, way, I'm, <laughs> I'm not buying it. It's a, it's a <laughs> why with the four highest vertical. You get jaw for sure. Dudes would just not jump as high and not have the fourth highest God, vertical. What's wrong? I swear, there's there's too many. There's gray area here too. They just wouldn't do it. No, I'm this fine. is. I'm not. I'm not buying this. And by the way, remember like Shane Larkin, Austin Rivers, these guys, Pat Connaughton, these guys have the crazy 48, 49 inch verts. But they're Pat not, like, Connaughton? He had the craziest vert really? coming out. But they're not like dunkers, so I don't even know if that like translates. Really. It probably doesn't. It's just you get high. I've never seen Shane what? Larkin dunk in the NBA game. I think he had a 50 inch vert coming out from my What? It's insane. That doesn't even make sense. I mean, sense. he never got to the rim. Exactly. Austin Rivers, remember how bouncy he was <laughs> in high school? You never really rim. saw it in the NBA. Like, I don't know if that would even Okay, so maybe we'd have translate. to team that with actual hand-eye coordination. Yeah, top. Sure. Okay, fine. We're trying. Uh, Steph Curry, Lou, or Chandler, how are we doing this? I don't care. Says Luca, Shea, and Anthony Edwards as the faces of the league when he, KD, and LeBron retire. Do we, are we good with those three choices? Yeah, I, I really like this, but I also throw I, I throw the rookies in there as well, Chet mm -hmm. and, and, and Wimby. I think that the league is in a great great place with these young guys, so uh, I'm definitely buying this take. I, I, I'm agreeing with what are you. Agree? Agree? What? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? I just want to make sure he gets his recognition. Yeah, I mean those three are you can't go wrong with those. SGA is really taking the step For this real. year, but I gotta go Wimby. He's he's gonna be something in the next two or three years. Yeah, you can't miss him, anyways. Um, Anthony Edwards was asked who the best player in the league is right now. His answer: Me. You buying that? I, he's, I believe him. I don't I don't buy that he's the best player, but I believe that he thinks he is, which is half the battle. I think he the he's confident, he's <laughs> he's borderline arrogant, um, and that's what makes him <laughs> him. He's exciting, he's funny, he's, he's pure entertainment, and the guy can hoop. He's one of the few two-way players that can defend, uh, can score the basketball. So yeah, I, I truly think he thinks he's the best player in the NBA. I kind of love that. I'm buying that. I, I'm buying that. Lou, Donovan Mitchell recently said, quote, I'm happy as hell where I'm at. You buying it? I'm, I'm buying that. He's he's playing mm. really good basketball right now. He's creeping into that MVP conversation with Embiid being out. Um, but as we know in the NBA, things change about a minute. Fair. But right now, I feel like this is a genuine statement, so I'm buying it. I like yeah. that. Yeah, why wouldn't you be? You're doing well. I'm um, not buying that. He's, he's so gone from there. <laughs> he's out. He is out. But I'm not, not to New York. I don't like that. Maybe. I don't spent, like the idea. And listen, they go on this run and they make it to the Eastern Conference Finals. Sure, but he's gone. I mean, it could happen, by the way. The East it could. is crazy. It's wide open. All right. Um, Pat Bev says the biggest difference between the Sixers and the Bucks is that in Milwaukee, quote, everybody wants to win and it's not about stats. Mm. You buying that? Just some shade. I'm not buying, I'm buying it. it. No, I think people on Philly want to win. I know Joel Embiid wants For to sure. win. I know that that organization wants to win. They, the way they move pieces, the way they've kind of gotten off all the contracts they've had, the trades, the Ben Simmons. Think about how far they want to win. This just seemed like a little personal, a little shot from Pat. Like someone there, that someone there in that locker room that he doesn't like, that he's just kind of. <laughs> Given a little jab to, but no, I mean, listen, everybody wants to win. I would, I would hope, but I would to, think. To certain levels, there, there are certain levels to that. But no, I'm not buying this. This seems like a, this seems like a disgruntled. Ex. A dig. Yeah. It does just saying mean stuff for the sake of it. Uh, Lou Mikel Bridges says the Suns underestimated the Bucks in the 21 NBA Finals after going up to nothing. He said, especially since the East wasn't that good. Are you buying that? Suns didn't respect the Bucks. No, I'm I'm not buying it. When you're in the NBA Finals, right. there's no such thing as underestimating your opponent. Even if you go up to, even if you go up too well. So I, I'm I'm not buying this, and we see what the results of that mentality was. So uh, maybe that's what they believed. Uh, I think that was kind of silly of them, but I'm I'm not buying it. Yeah, like comments like this make me. That makes them look bad. Like this makes Mikael Bridges look like he wasn't prepared. That I he's don't immature. Love it. Like his coaching staff didn't get them ready to play. Comments like this always worry me because you try to be honest. There's no, there's nothing good that comes out of this. You basically said you weren't prepared and. It is a weird comp. I mean, yeah, you're. I think it's both. I think you're trying to be honest, and it sounds like honesty, but maybe, maybe not that one. Well, I think you're yeah. shooting yourself too in the honest. foot. It's, yeah, it's stupid. Yes, yeah, it's, it's too honest. Uh, Chandler. 
Kevin Durant's go-to line when sliding into the DMs is apparently, <laughs> hi. Uh, I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it. Is you it? marry, bro. I got it. Yeah, take I'm, it. I'm, Thank you, Lou. I'm buying this. Yes. Very, that's all it takes? Yeah, because it, it leaves the door open for you just to make a proper introduction. It's lazy. And also not play yourself. It's lazy. You I'm just throw the feeler no, out there to hide it. It's not it's lazy, to... because if you're Kevin Durant and you slide into a DM and you're like, hey, what's up? What's going on? Look how thirsty Kevin Durant is in my Ooh. DM. You can't open yourself up to that type of Let me of ask you this, because Kevin Durant says, hi, Paul Pierce once told me that all he does is just the eyeballs, the eyeball emojis. That's creepier. That's, that's more, creepier? That's more creepier than the hi. That's a little creepy. Is it really? I wonder if that's generational. I like high. High sets the table. High just, it's, hi. again, you can't. Hi, how it's are just, you? You're just, it's you're just, so late. You're basically just looking for a response. What would and you, what you, would you prefer? Say. So then if she just writes back, hello, now what? How are you doing today? Oh, we're doing just basic. What do you have? We yeah. got to start wow, from Wow, this the... is enthralling. Should we... I would Should kill we... myself. Hi, can I take you to dinner tonight? <laughs> That's you on the second one? Absolutely not. <laughs> what I'm, what I'm you asking. can't put anything out there <laughs> you can get turned down on. So hi is right. just a simple. What happened to all the no confidence no screen, talked about? No screenshot material. Just hi. So uh, can Hello? I take you to dinner is screenshot are, material? Yes, absolutely. Because then a girl can asked me to go say, to dinner yeah, tonight. And I turned him down. And I, tur and I said no. OK, but do we all here think we're stupid? Why else is he saying hi in the DMs? Because he wants to have sex with that woman. Oh, so then just say that. You know, well, <laughs> it's a fine line these days, Michelle. It, today's going to go down in history. <laughs> Oh my God! And, and for, He's not and checking for that in reason, on the family. We need a better hi. All Star weekend. Can someone make sure so, Annie is getting little Johnny doing? Clips. We need a better All Star weekend He's so we can have something to actually. To get the cheeks. Um, we're gonna go to break. I'm gonna leave you in the hands of these two. How about that? I'm, I'm going with you. Gentlemen. Where are we headed? Where are we headed? When we come back, we'll wrap things up. Me and Lou get to wrap the show. <laughs> run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up. Welcome back to <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Welcome back to Run It Back. Chandler, Vince Carter, Chauncey Billups, mm -hmm. two of 16 finalists for the Hall of Fame this year. Do these do both of these guys get in? I yes. Absolutely. First of all, both of them are for sure locks. Looking at Chauncey Billups' career here, it's insane. NBA champion, NBA Finals MVP, five-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA defensive team, All-NBA third team. The guy's got a resume. Both of them Highly deserving. Vince Carter, to me, he was one of my favorite players growing up. Absolutely. He, outside the Set dunks. Set a standard for the dunk contest. Best dunker of all time. I'm excited that he's coming on tomorrow, I believe. Absolutely. But yeah, I think they both uh, they both come in. I think both of these guys get in. I watched Vince Carter growing up. Used to take the train down to um, Phillips Arena to watch him play when, he, when I was a young boy. Had an opportunity to work with Chauncey Billups in a professional manner. Uh, shout out to Big Shot, was one of my ex-coaches. So I, I'm really big fan of both of these guys. I hope they both get in. Well, tomorrow, Lou, we got Vince Carter and Mac we got McClung. Mac McClung tomorrow. Absolutely. One of the greatest Old dunkers of dunker. all time. <laughs> New school dunkers. I want to know what Vince is going to ask him. Like, what, 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 is, what does he I'm want curious, to know? I want to know... I want to know both of those guys' perspective on what the dunk contest looks like. So we'll tune in tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. 8 a.m. L.A. time, baby. Yes, indeed. Run it back, run it back, run it up. They're running back, y'all, y'all.